what I get is, is not considered an income. It's a non-taxable government benefit, a stipend. I just feel like I've been attacked because while I had custody of my child, per this court's order, Your Honor, they took my license away and my livelihood. And I was a self-employed trucker at the bar. I never got a letter saying that I became the defendant again instead of the plaintiff. Prior to losing my license, I had a commercial driver's license. I was a truck driver. I've been unable to obtain my CDL. The court reinstated his driver's license and um, allowed Mr. Calhoun the opportunity to pursue employment driving trucks. Mr. Calhoun worked four hours and, and quit. Total arrears through the end of April are $45,636.83. You're going to be paying till the day you die. You're supposed to be able to finish your child support when you're a young, healthy man. You're going to work till you're 70 or 80 years old. Um, and you probably never pay off your arrears. I've, I've suffered from the COVID-19 virus three times. And I've been hospitalized uh, one time for a car accident since that's happened. I'm under a doctor's care. And I also have an attorney, Barry and Barry, out of uh, Dearborn, Michigan, for my personal injury. It's also informed front of the court he has other income he has other available resources he receives a monthly va check we're not uh, able to garnish va benefits but it is used for purposes of determining income so mr porter would have to make payments on his own i'm gonna pay i, I like i like being free i'm gonna pay you. i could put together 250 dollars. that just mean i won't get my pain meds but i i can give you that whatever i get from this uh accident i'm willing to sign it right over to y'all because okay. i want to be free Mr. Calhoun is before the court this morning for a bench warrant hearing. Um, he has a total monthly obligation of $253.50. This is an arrears only case. His last payment was January 17th of 2023. That was $42.83 through an income withholding. Um, this is Mr. Calhoun's fourth bench warrant hearing. He's had two prior contempt findings. Um, so, just so the court is aware, on February 9th of 2022, um, your honor gave out a suspended uh, jail sentence to Mr. Calhoun of 21 days with zero days credit and a $500 purge pending his compliance at the April 2022 hearing, which he failed to appear for. Um, Mr. Calhoun contacted contacted friend of the court, resolved his warrant with the payment of $600. Um, so he um, has a total shortfall of $2,578.77. Um, back at that, at that time, back in 2022, your honor, you also ordered um, a rescission of his driver's license suspension so he could obtain and maintain employment. Um, Mr. Calhoun's payments have been very sporadic since that time of receiving his license back. His total arrears through the end of April are $45,636.83. Mr. Calhoun, do you dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Brown? I do not, Your Honor. Do you have any questions for Ms. Brown? Uh, no, sir, Your Honor. I okay. What would you like to tell me, sir? Well, Your Honor, um, I know you guys gave me my license back in order to become gainfully employed. I've tried to do so uh, in the time that you guys have allotted me to have my license in all this time. Uh, prior to losing my license, I had a commercial driver's license. I was a truck driver. I've been unable to obtain my CDL and... Um, I have a learner's permit for it, and I'm scheduled to take a road test for it. I've tried to remain gainfully employed since you guys uh, returned my license to me. I do have gainful employment now. I know it seems sporadic. I've, I've suffered from the COVID-19 virus three times, and I've been hospitalized uh, one time for a car accident since that's happened. And I know that has no bearing on what I, my obligation is to the court. So today, Your Honor, I'm just here to try to um, basically give you all my job information, um, hope with hopes that you guys don't lock me up and, uh, to try to throw myself at the mercy of the court. Okay. Where, where are you, you say you're working now? Yes, sir. Your honor. Okay. In uh, Woodward in Homer. Okay. Well, the last payment you had through income withholding was made in January of 2023. 
Why has there not been any payment since then if you have been working sporadically, as you stated? Well, I, I had got sick twice this year with COVID-19. Okay. Uh, the first time was, was the Omicron variant. I caught it at work uh, in January of this year, and I was off. And uh, I also had a, a car accident uh, on February 27th, and my car was totaled and I was hurt. So I had to be off for maybe two weeks then. I've been looking for gainful employment. I've just secured a place to live in Albion, Michigan, and I've secured gainful employment here in Homer. I know uh, it's been a big gap in between payments, Your Honor. And if uh, given the opportunity, Your Honor, I, uh, I try to fill those gaps in as best I can. Uh, where are you working at now, sir? At Woodworth in Homer, Michigan. Okay. And uh, how much do you make on average per week? Well, this is, uh, I'm just starting here. So it's a $17 an hour job. Okay. I'm just starting. Um, is it full time? Um, yes, sir, it is. When do you receive your uh, first paycheck so that you could pay your support obligation? First paycheck would be Friday the 26th, sir. I have a whole pay schedule right here in front of me. I don't know if you can see it. I'm highlighted at the bottom of it with the marks on it. Those are all my paydays. Okay. It has my shift supervisor's name and all that stuff on there too. Okay. Uh, it's named Worker Supervisor. What I'm going to do in this matter is, uh, again, you've, you've acquired that employment. The court is going to take you at your word that you're going to begin, uh, again, paying and paying as ordered. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjourn this case to July 19, 2023, 8 o'clock a.m., and that gives you about two months to see what you're going to do as far as making payments. If yes, you make sir. payments, if you continue to make payments during that time, then at that point, the court will, you know, adjourn the matter further. If you don't make yes. any payments at that time, you should be prepared to go to jail. You understand that? Yes, sir, you're in. Okay, so it's up to you, and uh, hopefully when we get you back on that date, uh, you'll have made your payments and we'll be able to, uh, you know, at that point, maybe we'd adjourn it out six months to see that you continue it, because obviously it appears that you don't want to go to jail. We don't want you to go to jail. We just want payments to be made. So we will yes, see sir. you back. We'll see you back on the July 19th date. He was before the court. May 17th of this year, and the matter was adjourned till today to monitor his compliance. His last voluntary payment was January 17th of 2023. That was through an income withholding. That was for $42.83. This is the fourth bench warrant hearing, and he's had two prior contempt findings. For two months of compliance, Mr. Calhoun should have paid $507. He's paid nothing. His arrears through the end of June are $45,636.83. And, and your honor, the court would like, uh, friend of the court would like the court to kind of understand the history of this case over almost the last two years. He was before your honor on November 10th of 2021. At that time, the court reinstated his driver's license and um, allowed Mr. Calhoun the opportunity to pursue employment driving trucks. He had been a truck driver previously. So we reinstated the license and then you adjourn the matter out until February 9th of 2022. At that time, you did find Mr. Calhoun in contempt because no payments had come in from that employer. And you gave him a suspended sentence of 21 days with zero days credit and a $500 purge. Pending his compliance on the April 20th, 2022 hearing, which he failed to appear for, the bench warrant issued, he resolved it through front of the court and was before your honor on May 17th of 2023. At that time, he reported that his employer was Woodworth in Homer. It was through a temporary agency Friend of the court contacted that temporary agency and learned that Mr. Calhoun worked four hours and, and quit. So his employment has been terminated. 
So now today he is before the court on July 19th. There has still been no voluntary payments made. He is no longer employed. Um, and here we are today. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Uh, Calhoun, do you uh, dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Brown? Uh, yes, sir, Your Honor. Can I speak to the court or address the court? May I address the court, Your Honor? Yep, yep. My, my, my question was, do you contest or dispute any of her uh, I don't, statements? I don't, I don't dispute anything she's saying, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead. Tell me what you want me to know, sir. Yes, sir. Your Honor, um, this same court in 2009 gave me custody of my daughter for this case. Um, I didn't, um, I didn't, I, I never got a letter saying that I became the defendant again instead of the plaintiff. Uh, per this court order uh, from Judge Conrad Sent, or the Honorable Judge Conrad Sent, he gave me custody of my joint custody of my daughter. He ordered that this court ordered that I have my daughter in my care all the way until her 18th birthday, in which I did for the time she was nine years old in 2009 from this court on the same very case. I don't know when I became the defendant again instead of the plaintiff, Your Honor. And in 2010 or 11, you guys took my license uh, behind this same case. Your Honor, I just wanted to know if it, there was a way I can get an audit or a review for my case so we can see what happened or whether Judge Conrad since order giving me custody of my child and giving me physical custody of my child and having her reside with me and me provide for her uh, uh, when that got rescinded because she stayed with me all the way from 2009 to 2019 per this court's order. And as far as the current payments, the 5850 a week, Your Honor, I can make good on every week that I haven't paid since the last time I looked at you on this screen, Your Honor. If you give me to the first of the month, I'll pay the whole thing. Uh, the 500 something plus the next 5850 that's owed for the next week per this court's order. But I still like a review of my case, if if you could, Your Honor, or an audit of my case, because I don't know at what point Ms. Brown became uh, the plaintiff instead of the defendant again in this case, because Judge Sint gave me custody of my child. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I'm, I'm, I feel like uh, the whole time, I just feel like I've been attacked because while I had custody of my child, per this court's order, Your Honor, they took my license away and my livelihood. And I was a self-employed trucker at the time. And I'm sorry for laying all this on you this morning, well, Your Honor. Well, well we, we've re we reinstated your license in 21. So I, that, that's a non-issue at this point because you've got it yes, back. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Brown, do you know if he had custody? Do you know when that order changed? So, Your Honor, what I can tell you, I just quickly looked at his case. Um, the last time current support charged on this case was October of 2008. So the arrears built up. He was being charged over 500 a month, and he wasn't complying from the entry of the order through 2008. So this case has been arrears only since 2008, the end of 2008. Okay. Does that help you, sir? I mean, you stated yes, that. Yes, sir. It's, it's okay. Arrears. So. As of the time that uh, Judge Sint entered an order giving you custody in 2009, yes, uh, there hasn't been any support accrue at that point. Yes, this sir. is only for the last, uh, for the time before 2008, actually. Okay, and Your Honor, as far as my, uh, my employment, I had a bad car accident in February. I've had seven different employers since then. I'm under a doctor's care and I also have an attorney Barry and Barry out of uh, Dearborn, Michigan, for my personal injury. Uh, they are set to settle by February 27th, which is the anniversary one year of my accident, of my car getting totaled and hurting my back. I'm under the care of Dr. Sidney Stano at I Albion uh, Family Chiropractic Care on Austin Avenue in Albion. And I go there three to four times a week for my back. And I've been unable to stand at work. And I'm hopefully... By August 3rd, I can return to Tenneco and, and come to work there because it'd be one year anniversary of the time I got fired. They won't let me come back until then. And that's the only job I could find that I could actually sit on a forklift and sit and work. But I will uh, make good on the payment of the 5850 up until, uh, you know, up to current from the last time I saw you, Your Honor. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm getting a lawsuit settlement coming in February. I'm hoping it's some type of way I could settle with the court or fix this or, or at least knock a big chunk off of what I owe or if not pay the whole thing. 
Yeah, and I've been trying, you know. Okay. So when would you be able to pay the uh, your current support amount and the uh, you said you referenced the five hundred dollars as well? Yes, I'll be able to I'll be able to take care of that on the first of the month, sir. First of the month, okay. Yes, sir. One one August. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do, to sir, you. I'm going to give you a chance. What I'm going to do is uh, have you order that you continue to comply with and pay the uh, current uh, support arrearage amount and further pay the uh, lump sum of $500 no later than, uh, well, I'll give you, I'm going to adjourn the matter to August 16, 2023 at, are you 845, Ms. Brown? Yes, Your Honor. 845. I'll give you to August 10th to pay the uh, the five hundred dollars, and uh, then as well we'll be able to see what you're doing. Are you working? If you are working and you're paying this current amount, uh, we can in fact uh, continue to uh, adjourn the matter and keep that suspended sentence in place until we get some resolution of your. A personal injury case, but I will tell you, if you do nothing between now and the August uh, 16th date, you better plan on going to jail and serve in the 21 you, I, days I, I, that yes, I suspended sir. previously. So, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. I, I'm going to pay. You. I, I like I like being free. I'm going to pay you. Okay. We'll see Your you Honor, back on I, August. Go I, ahead. Just I want Mr. Calhoun to be clear that his. Monthly obligation ordered on arrears is two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Two fifty a month. Yeah. Okay, I was looking at something that deducted uh, that said fifty eight fifty a week or something. That's what it said on the. It's two fifty uh, a month. So I just wanted to make some sure type of ADP thing. That two fifty a month. Yes. Okay. Okay. We'll see you back on August sixteenth, sir. Mr. Calhoun, in this matter, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses. Upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. You understand the charges? I understand, Your Honor. The court has appointed Ms. Huffman to represent you in this matter. Have you had sufficient opportunity to speak to Ms. Huffman in preparation for this proceeding? Uh, yes. Ms. Huffman, are you ready to proceed? I am, Your Honor. This is a compliance hearing. He has a monthly obligation of two fifty three fifty. This is an arrears only case. Uh, Mr. Calhoun's last voluntary payment was September twelfth, and that was six dollars and eighty five cent through an income withholding with Tenneco. Um, back on July nineteenth of twenty three, Your Honor suspended a sentence for Mr. Calhoun. That sentence was twenty one days zero days credit with a $500 purge. You also ordered him to make an additional $500 payment at that time. Um, he So to reflect the compliance, Mr. Calhoun during that court order uh, did pay $550.55. In the last three months, he's paid zero. He's had two prior contempt findings. Um, his total shortfall for the three months is $760.50. His total arrears are $44,507.28 through the end of December. A uh, friend of the court would like the court to be aware that Mr. Calhoun did submit some medical documentation speaking to um, the fact that he has been taken off work, um, not able to work from November the 15th through just recently. Um, however, uh, Mr. Calhoun is also informed front of the court. He has other income. He has other available resources. He receives a monthly VA check. Ms. Hoffman, uh, do you contest or dispute any of the statements made by uh, Ms. Brown? No, I do not. Do you have any questions for Ms. Brown? Do you know how much um, Mr. Calhoun receives for his uh, VA disability or VA? I do not know the amount. Okay. Is that um, something that you can collect on is his uh, VA 
Is is that are you allowed to collect on that? We cannot establish an income withholding on it. Uh, Mr. Calhoun would have to allow the VA to send in um, the court ordered amount every month, but that's something he would have to approve. Like, so to answer your question, we cannot establish an income withholding on it, but there is paperwork for him to allow the VA to make that payment every month. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. You're welcome. Any proofs, Ms. Huffman? Uh, yes, I would call Mr. Calhoun. Are you currently receiving any income? Uh, well, what I'm what I get is, is not considered an income. It's a non-taxable government benefit, a stipend from the VA. And yes, I, I guess it's considered an income, but it's uh twenty three hundred and seventy four dollars a month, um, and it's for rent and for bills and for paying paying for meds. And, I guess for getting back and forth to doctor's appointments now, because I've been in, under doctor's care all year last year from February okay. until now. Yep. And I was just going to ask you about that. Um, do you have a, are you considered to be disabled right now? Well, right now, ma'am, I'm, I'm a 90% disabled veteran, first of all. And second of all, uh, I'm disabled. I have stenosis in my neck. They want to do a neck surgery on me, stenosis of my spine. Um, I'm afraid I don't want to let them cut on me, but I have to. So I don't want to end up paralyzed. I had a severe accident in February the 27th of last year. I think I may have mentioned it in court before that I was under the doctor's care and that I had uh, been in an accident. Is that uh, doctor's care or I guess documentation from the doctor, does that state that you're still unable to work? Yes, it does. Okay, and does the front of the court have that information? Yes, uh, Ms. Ms. Brown said that she received it uh, when I spoke with her this morning. I've sent the, the off work slips for the last three months that the doctor gave me. And he, he also suggested that I not go back to work for fear that I might become paralyzed. And how long does he expect that you would be off work? Well, at least he, he well, he's, he told me I should probably file for disability because once they go in there, infuse my my neck i may not be able to work again they're going to fuse the vertebrae in my neck or something here okay have you and was that from the accident yes it was ma'am okay and um have you filed for social security disability yet i have an open claim right now i'm, I'm in the process of i just didn't have everything i needed to enter into the system while i was filing it mm-hmm I, so, they've, so they've so they've you filed, but they've requested more documentation. More yes. Okay. And then is there also a possibility that you could get a payment from the insurance company from the accident? Yes, ma'am. But the litigation uh, doesn't start. The one year mark is at February twenty seventh. The the Progressive Insurance has offered me several settlements and my lawyers have turned them down because it wouldn't cover, I guess, whatever uh, medical, everything that I've going through, it, they, they did not, they come, they turned it down. So they're going to litigate starting February 27th will be the one year mark. And okay. I also let the court know before that uh, whatever I get from this uh, accident, I'm willing to sign it right over to y'all because okay. I want to be free. Okay. Do you have any money to be able to pay the court um, at this time? Uh, well, the money I have for my uh, for my I, I could put together two hundred and fifty dollars. That just means I won't get my pain meds, but I, I can give you that. That's the only reason I haven't been paying it. Okay. The income that you do get, um, you said was for rent, bills, and meds. Does that leave you any money left over? Uh, usually uh, maybe three to $400 a month I have over, and I use that to eat with, man. Okay. So you don't have, I mean, by the time you pay your expenses, rent, um, food, um, gas, and whatever else you need, there's how much is left over after that? Close to 400 bucks, like $390. Okay, but th that includes your food? That's that's everything okay. I have. Okay. Do you know when uh, you might get approved for Social Security disability if you were 
uh, or do you not have any clue at this at this time? I'm not sure at this point, but I know I'm a 90% disabled veteran. Um, and also, uh, I, I think they may take that into account. But my lawyer that I have for my uh, uh, personal injury case, he said he could take that on as well if they get if they give me an issue. As far okay, as uh, so you applied for social security disability yes, on your own. I did it on my own. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I have. Uh, do you have anything else that you would like to inform the court of at this time? No, ma'am. Other than um, I, I, I want to let uh, your honor know that I'm not trying to waste the court's time, nor am I trying to defy anything that he's ordered me to do. It's just been very hard for me to get back and forth to these appointments and be able to pay at the same time and not be able to be gainfully employed. And I've tried to go back to work, your honor, seven times since my accident in February. In all seven jobs, I haven't been able to. I, I left the last place at Tenneco and in, in it. And uh, uh, going straight to the emergency room because I could not stand or move anymore. And if I had a, a, a little bit more strength, I would, I would work full time and give y'all everything y'all asking for. But I just don't have it, uh, Your Honor. And um, I'd hate for get, to get locked up and not be able to get any treatment. But if you do lock me up, I do got my stuff prepared. I'll come to Battle Creek, turn myself in. I got my meds right here. Um, that's all I got. Nothing further. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Brown, I can't remember when, when when was the date you said that we had entered the, the uh, sentence and then suspended that? It was July 19th of 2023. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, I do, if I could, I yes, just go ahead. like the court to be aware that the medical documentation received from Mr. Calhoun's doctor um, yesterday, it goes through February 10th of this year um, and then a couple of years ago, Mr. Calhoun was before your honor and spoke of his back injury. At that time, you reinstated his driver's license because he had work lined up to drive trucks because of the back injury um, and he, he did not maintain that employment. As to the status of your um, ability, ability to work, and when that that's was a lie. Can I, can I have proof well, of that? No, no, that's a Mr. lie, Mr. Lamy. Mr. Lamy, uh, that's a lie. May I say something, Your Honor? Yes, go ahead, sir. Uh, this is a total different injury from an accident I just had in February of 2023, Your Honor, when my car was totaled, and uh, I that's uh, my neck and back injury came from uh, uh, this 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 in injury. This current injury, it's, it's not the same injury from before, Your Honor. Okay. I have suspended that uh, sentence previously. I'm going to, at this point, I'm going to continue the suspension. What I'm going to do is order that you make a lump sum payment of $200, no later than January 19th, this Friday. Okay? And then I'm going to adjourn the yes, matter sir, Your Honor. to... May 15th, 2023, 8.45 a.m., and we will continue the suspended sentence through that time. And I'm doing that so that you can, uh, again, see what happens with regard to the insurance claim that you have as well as your disability claim so we can monitor both of those. Uh, Ms. Brown, Mr. Calhoun stated he's willing to effectively sign over on that settlement is there something we can do and provide to his attorney as far as a lien against that he would need to provide his attorney's name and the name of the company um that he's suing like i have no idea okay but we could mr. do a lien okay. mr mr calhoun can you provide that to miss brown yes sir okay i have or, no problem well, with that your honor Court will uh, allow you to uh, provide that information within 10 days, 10 days of today's date. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Provide, uh, again, provide your attorney's name as well as the name of the entity that you believe that you're going to be suing in, uh, I think, in February, you said in February 27th at that time. Yes, Your so, Honor. Okay? Yes, Your Honor. So provide that. Well, I'll, what I'll do, I'll give you 14 days. That'll be closer to the time that you're going to be uh, filing that. So you have 14 days to provide that 
the name of your name and the contact information yes, on your attorney, as well as the entity that you will be uh, suing on that particular claim. And then the court will, at that point, uh, take a lien yes, against that. Okay, sir? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Okay. That will be all we need today. Uh, you. You're excused. Have a good day. Uh, if I could, please, just one more thing, um, Mr. Calhoun. So I just want to make sure that you understand you have to pay $250 by Friday. I believe that's this Friday, the court yes, stated. Yes. Okay, right. don't forget about that. Yes. And then make your make your monthly payments um, until your next hearing in May. Okay, yes. continue yes. to make your monthly payments until May. Your Honor, was the lump sum 200 or 250? 200. Thank oh, you. 200. Sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. She's not just choosing voluntarily not to work. This She's not able to work at this point. Um, and she's not getting paid. And so in this situation, I believe, Ms. Cortez, this is warranted for a downward mod, at least to zero. Cortez is also taking care of her family um, in a different city. And she has, she just gave birth two weeks ago.